This John Deere 3020 behind me runs poorly. It desperately needs new points and condenser, new spark plugs and wires, and it also needs some work on the timing. If your John Deere tractor is running poorly and needs those same procedures done to it, then watch this video and at the end, you'll have the confidence to follow all these steps on your own tractor. In my shop today, I have both a 2010 and a 3020 John Deere, but these techniques apply to so many John Deere tractor models. Whether it's two, four, or six cylinder, the techniques are gonna be the same. That applies to a John Deere A, B, G, 50, 60, 70, the 20 and 30 series, the M's, the 40, 420, 1010, 2010, 3010, 3020, etc. All of those John Deere tractors have a Delco distributor. There's two different styles and we'll discuss the differences later on. But if you have any of those John Deere models, this video is going to help you and you'll be able to follow along on your very own tractor. I'm ready to take the distributor off of my tractor so that we can put new points in it. If you are confident in your timing, you could leave your distributor on your tractor and put new points with it on. Um, but I'm going to show you how to time it all properly, so we'll just take it off and do that on the bench. There's one little wire here that goes to your coil, and I think it's a 5 16th size. So you're going to need to loosen that up. And then once you have it loose, the wire will just pull out like that. And with that, you can see that my distributor is loose. Down here, there's two bolts, which I've already taken, or nuts, which I've already taken off. And then there's these little clips that kind of hold it on. You gotta pull the clips up at the same time as the distributor since the clips kind of hold that in there. Let me get both of those loose and then the distributor will come out just like that. I'm gonna pull this top cap off of my distributor and then inside we'll see the rotor which just pulls off the top. And then there's a dust cover, which again pulls out of the way like that to expose our points and condenser. You can see how rusted my condenser is. That is really bad. Let's try to pull the condenser out of the way first here. And then I'll move over and do the points. So I got the condenser out on this side of the distributor. Let me loosen that up. I'll spin this around towards you. On this side, you can see that there's a screw here, which I'm going to loosen up and when I do, you'll see that the wire came out with the condenser and then this wire here, which I'm just gonna set aside. The points are held into place right by this um, one screw here on the bottom. So I'm just gonna loosen that one up and then the points will come right off, just like that. Next, I do have this plate down here at the bottom. You can see that there's two screws, one on each side here. I'm gonna take both of those screws off so that I can clean up this plate. You can see there's quite a bit of corrosion on there and I just want it to be clean and in good condition before we put it all back together. I put one or two drops on each side of my spring and slide here in my distributor. I'm using a three-in-one oil and that's what you can drop in there before you put your plate back on. You can see that my plate is all cleaned up on both sides. I don't want to have any corrosion on the plate as this is the way that the distributor is ground. With that done, I'm ready to put these screws on each side so that my plate is held into place. This plate is directional, so if you get mixed up on the direction, just look for this notch on the side where the wire comes out of the distributor to the coil, and you'll be able to line that up and get it in the right position. I'm gonna make sure these are really tight. They are, and with that, I'm ready to put a little bit of grease on the top here. I'm gonna slide that all around. This comes in your tune-up kit. I'm gonna do that, and then I'm just gonna wash off my fingers here. Next, I'm going to put my new points on. You can see that there's a little uh, notch here and that slides into place. Then I have this screw that I'm going to reuse and that will screw the points down. I'm tightening up my screw so it's not all the way tight so that I can still move my bottom of the plate there a little bit back and forth. I have my gauge here for 22 thousandths while my distributor is at high lobe. You do not want to make this adjustment when you're at low lobe. This would be low. This is high. You can see that the point there touches this black piece. So with that at high lobe, then I'm testing my points at that 22 thousandths. I made sure that my feeler gauge is clean. I use this for valves beforehand. I don't want to have any oil on my points. This is good at 22 thousandths, so I'm just going to tighten my screw up the rest of the way and hold that into place. 
Once I have the screw tightened, I'll just use my feeler gauge again and double check that that 22 thousandths is still good and snug there as I want it to be at high low. Then I will double check and make sure when I move my distributor around, you can see that the points open and close as they should. My next step is to put my condenser in. The condenser will slide through here just like that. Let me use a pair of pliers here to get it all the way where I want it to be. Your condenser may come with a clip like this in the kit and if your distributor already has that retainer for it, you won't need to use this retainer. You can just set that aside and not use it. This wire is gonna come over here into place. Let me get a small screwdriver and I'll loosen up this screw so that there's room for it. This is gonna slide over the top like that. And then my second wire, I like to put one from the top and one from the bottom. So let me slide this around. Oops, I got them tangled. Let me start with this one then from the bottom. There we go. Okay, I have that in place in the bottom. This one in place on top of it, just like that. And then I'll tighten up this screw to hold both of those spades in there. There we go. So this wire is secure. Actually, I think that coil wire should drop down a little bit further if we can. There we go. Okay. I like the way both of those wires are. This one's gonna wrap around here and come out of the distributor like that. When you are ready to maintain your own John Deere tractor, you're going to need some parts. The parts on the table in front of me are available on my own website. It's farmtractorrepair.com. Let me roll through them with you. We offer this ignition tune-up kit, which comes with the spark plugs, or we offer a more basic ignition tune-up kit, which is just condenser, rotor, and points. So you can choose whatever level you'd like. Back here, we offer dust covers, which we have for both styles of distributors, and then caps for either style. These are brand new spark plug wires, which are fit to go onto your tractor. And then here is a new coil, which is designed for tractor use. All of these parts are on my website. It's farmtractorrepair.com. We also have some other John Deere parts like carburetor kits or valve train kits. If you're looking for those as well, you can take a peek. Again, that site is farmtractorrepair.com and your purchase on my site helps to fund future tractor tutorials. My next step is to double check my distributor and make sure that it's grounding properly. So I have my meter here set to ohms. I'm gonna set one probe on ground and the other on the arm of the points. Then when I rotate, around here, my meter should turn on and off when I rotate to high lobe and low lobe. Mine doesn't. That means that I have a ground problem. Ground problems are common with this condenser wire will get snagged or I think mine has a problem right here where this bottom wire is stuck on the um, bottom plate. So I'm going to loosen this up and move this wire around. I'm going to put it up here on top with my condenser wire. I'll put that behind there and then tighten this up and we'll try again and make sure that those points are where we got the right connection here. So let me put ground and the arm. There you can see it turns off, it turns, oops, maybe I'm not making good connection. Here we go. Turns off, turns on, off. You can see that it flips back and forth. There we go, okay? This is how you want your distributor to operate, where it's on and off, on and off, on high lobe and low lobe. This is a very, very common pitfall with people when they put their distributor back together. We get tech calls on this all the time and uh, it's just super common. So take the time to do this step before you put the distributor back in your tractor and discover later on that you have a problem. It's easiest to remedy that problem right now. Now I'm ready to put my dust cover on. It just sets over top like that. And then we have a rotor, which is directional. You can see that the groove fits in there. Make sure that you slide it down all the way like I did here. And then we have a cap that goes on the very top. You can see that there's a groove right here and that matches the groove on this side of the distributor. So I'm gonna set that all into place and then I'll tighten up the screws on either side. I'm going to drop my distributor into the tractor. I'm putting a little bit of that three-in-one oil just on the shaft there. Notice that there's a gear at the bottom. That gear has to line up inside. So I'm gonna take a flashlight and shine down there just so that I get a general idea of where I wanna start. And then I'm going to drop this down into place. I can rotate it once I get to this part by moving the rotor up at the top just a little bit until it drops in like that. 
Notice that I didn't use force. I want this to drop in gently as it should. I have these two tabs that go on either side here. Then I have a little washer and the nut on top. I'm just gonna get these started, but I won't tighten up all the way yet. The next thing I want to do is determine the firing order on this tractor. To start with, I need to know where my number one wire should go on the cap. My number one wire is gonna go where the rotor is pointing when my engine is on the compression stroke for cylinder number one. Number one is always a cylinder that's closest to the radiator. You can see that I have my spark plug pulled out of the hole for cylinder number one. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, put, make sure that my tractor is in park. Then I'm going to turn the key, press the starter button. And when I do, I'm going to have two fingers over top of the hole where the spark plug was. I'm not putting my fingers in the hole. They're just simply resting on top of the cylinder hole. And when I do, some puff of air is gonna come out. I'm not sealing the hole. My finger's not going in the hole. It's just resting on top of where that spark plug was. Also, when I roll this around, my fan and the belt is gonna be moving. So I'm careful that I stay out of the way of those moving parts and that my tractor is in park or neutral if you're working on a different model tractor. Be safe when you do this step. Okay, so now I have my tractor in park. I'm gonna turn the key. When I roll the engine over, you should listen for a puff of air and watch the rotor. When that puff of air happens, I wanna see where my rotor is pointing on the distributor. So you listen and watch the rotor here while I do this step. I'm gonna go ahead and press this button. Did you hear the puff there? Let me do it again for you. Okay, so you could hear that puff of air when the rotor was facing about right here. That's gonna tell me where the number one is for top dead center on this engine. I installed new spark plugs on my tractor. The gap is 25 thousandths for these plugs. And then you can see I have my new wires into place. When you pull your wires out of the bag, they're gonna be different lengths and they aren't labeled. Number one is your longest one since it's the farthest away from the distributor. Number two is your second longest one. And then three and four are your shorter ones since they're closest to the distributor. Then you install your wires in the correct order on the distributor. So we determine that my number one is right here. You start with your number one, wherever you found out that number one needs to be. Mine's right here. So this is number one wire, which is always closest to the radiator. I'm starting with right here. My firing order is one, three, four, two. So my next wire is back here. And you can see that that traces down to cylinder number three. Here's four. And then this one is cylinder number two. The firing order will differ depending on the model of tractor, so you need to consult your manual and figure out what your firing order is for your tractor. Also, this John Deere is a counterclockwise rotation. Some tractors are clockwise. So again, consult your manual to know what the firing order is and if it's counterclockwise or clockwise, and then set your wires into the correct order on your cap. It is vitally important that you get the right coil on your tractor. If you put the wrong coil, then your tractor won't rev and idle properly and you'll have all sorts of problems and it'll probably be hard to pinpoint too. So let's talk about the coil so that you can make sure you get the right one for your tractor. This is the coil that we sell. It is a 12 volt coil that is designed for a tractor that has a resistor on it already. This John Deere has resistance in the wire, so this is the correct coil for this tractor. This is a coil that is commonly sold at an auto parts store. It's still a 12 volt coil and the packaging says that it will generically fit a tractor, but the problem is that it has a resistor inside. So when you put this coil on a tractor that already has a resistor, you're doubling up and you're gonna end up with four ohms of resistance and that's gonna cause you problems. This resistor that we sell should rate at about one and a half ohms and you can test that with a meter yourself if you ever want to. Mine's showing 1.4 right now. This coil is gonna show a little over two ohms. Let's see what we got, 2.7 right now. The ohms will fluctuate a little bit with temperature, so don't be too concerned as long as you're close to that one and a half. That's what you need for a tractor like this. Now, this requirement does change model to model. If you're working on a John Deere A or B that's six volt, then you need a six volt coil and you need an external resistor. This varies greatly. 
But for this tractor behind me, which has resistance in the wire, you'll need a coil like this one for your tractor. Make sure you get the right coil. I have seen countless tractors that are running poorly only because somebody installed the wrong coil on them. So take the time to do the research and figure out what coil you need for your own tractor. My coil is replaced and now I'm ready to make some final timing adjustments. So the perfect timing on this John Deere 3020 is at 20 degrees from top dead center. There's a 20 degree mark on the flywheel. You can see that I took a yellow chalk mark and put that at the 20 degrees so it's more obvious to me. There's many marks on the flywheel. You'll see a 25 degree mark, you'll see top dead center. You're looking for 20 degrees for a gas 3020 tractor. That mark being in the center of this inspection cover is when your tractor is gonna be at the optimum priming. Now you move that mark by making an adjustment to the distributor position here and that will be accomplished when the tractor is running. I have my timing light hooked up here and it is connected to the number one cylinder. Therefore, a light will flash whenever the number one spark plug wire is working. And at that point, we should see the yellow mark. I'm gonna start the tractor up and show you how that works and you'll see that as I move the distributor, a little tiny bit at a time, that mark will disappear, either it'll go forward or back. Um, but my goal is to get that yellow mark lined up in the middle and when it's at that mark, that's when I'm gonna tighten up my nuts here so that the distributor stays in place at that perfect timing position. Also when the tractor's running, I'm checking the oil pressure to make sure that the uh, gauge shows pressure. We took the distributor out and put it back in and I wanna make sure that it's all installed properly. You can see as I shine my light right now, I have that yellow mark in the center where it should be. But let me show you, if I grip onto my distributor with a pair of channel locks and move it back and forth ever so slightly, you can hear the tractor change and you can also see that my yellow mark disappears. I'm gonna bring it back up there. At this position is where I wanna tighten up the distributor. Notice that I'm making this adjustment at idle and you'll want to make your adjustment then too. It's important for you to realize that there are different styles of distributors that John Deere used on their tractors in this era. They're all made by Delco, but the difference is the way that the cap is on to the distributor. See how this one is clipped on? The one that I used earlier was screwed on. Um, so this is different, the cap is different, the dust cap is different, the inside parts are a little bit different. However, the technique is exactly the same. So even if you have a distributor like this one, you can follow all the same steps that I outlined on my 3020. Just know that when you order parts, you need to identify whether you you have this clip-on type distributor or if you have a screw-on cap. You can notice that this 2010 again has a slightly different style distributor but what you're paying attention to is if it's clip-on or screw-on to get the right parts. I hope that this tutorial is helpful to you and now that you've watched the video you have the confidence to install your distributor in time on your tractor, replace the points and get it running like it should. When you are ready to purchase the parts please purchase them on my site it's farmtractorrepair.com also, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. We have lots of videos on this series of John Deere Tractor, and we also release new videos all the time, and your subscription will help us out.